Hey everyone, it's Lisa and Micah from the blog farmhousehomeboom.com. And today I want to come at you with another sourdough recipe because I love using my sourdough starter here in the farmhouse. And that is going to be the easiest, no need, no mixing up. You'll be shocked at how easy it is, sourdough starter pizza crust. Okay, so I promise you this really is about the easiest recipe ever. And I actually read about it somewhere on the internet a long time ago, and it took me a little bit of playing around with it to get it right, but it is shockingly easy and actually delicious. So wait till you see what it is. So if you're unfamiliar with sourdough starter, go and visit the video I did all about sourdough starter, why we love to use it, the health benefits of it, all of that good stuff. I'll link it in the cards above and also in the description box below and you can see all about it, how we use it, why we love it. Also, I shared a recipe recently for sourdough English muffins, also super simple. And of course, if you're already familiar with sourdough starter, let's dive right into this recipe. What you're gonna need for this, fed sourdough starter, a little bit of olive oil, salt and some Italian seasonings. And then this is crucial, you need a pizza stone or a cast iron skillet. And that is crucial because of the way that this is gonna be made. It's made basically from liquid sourdough starter. No extra flour, no extra water, nothing. So we're gonna take a stone. And in my case, I found out that you can use cast iron just by default because in my family, I can no longer make just one pizza to fill everybody. And so I thought, what else could I use? I need something that's not gonna stick to, needs to be pretty good weight, like a regular pizza pan isn't gonna be a heavy enough thing, you know, cause it needs to preheat, which I'll show you. And that's when I decided to try to use the sour or the cast iron skillet. I'm gonna start this process by preheating my oven to 400 degrees, but I'm gonna preheat the skillet that I'm gonna use, the cast iron skillet, and the stone with it. So I put my two pizza cooking vessels in the oven on 400 degrees. I'm actually gonna turn up to 425. I really like to preheat my nonstick things like cast iron. It's very important. And I'm gonna let them stay in there the entire duration of the preheating process so that they get super, super hot. Now, if you watched my video on my secret for cooking crispy potatoes in the cast iron skillet, again, I'll link it in the cards and the description box below, you know that preheating a skillet and making sure it's super hot before any food touches it is the secret to cooking in cast iron. Other than that preheating process, this crust takes no time. So it's one of those things that you have nothing planned for dinner and you need something quick. And as long as you have a little bit of cheese in your fridge, fed sourdough starter, and then some veggies to top it with or meat if you have that, then you have a super quick meal on hand. So sourdough starter, cheese, and veggies, like super simple. This is one of those things you can do in a pinch because you can have it done for sure in less than an hour. Now, while my crusts are baking and while the stones are preheating, that's when I like to chop up my veggies like my peppers and onions or mushrooms or whatever you have, get them sauteing in the skillet because the crusts are gonna be pretty much baked when they're done. And so you're not going to be baking the vegetables until they're tender with the crust in the oven. So you're gonna to wanna to pre saute them. So this is the part where if I'm making dinner and I'm preheating my skillet and my stone, this is the part where I'm chopping all the veggies and getting them a little bit soft and sauteed. Okay, now that those have been in the oven quite a while, preheating, I even left them in a little bit longer just because I was busy doing other things in the kitchen, so they're quite hot. I'm gonna pull them out and show you the rest of this process. So you're just gonna drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil, and then you're gonna take your ladle and just put it on the pan and kind of spread it out in a thin layer. Now you need quite a bit of sourdough starter for this process. And you're gonna notice that as you're spreading it out, which I'm gonna use my fingers, make sure they're washed, obviously. And you're gonna notice that the bottom part is already cooking. It's already getting hard. And you just spread it out till the desired shape. I like to make mine in a circle, like a traditional pizza crust. And I like to 
even put a little ridge around the outside, like a crust ridge like this. But you just keep spreading. It'll become easier the warmer it gets from coming into contact with the pan. It'll spread better. And you don't want any spots too thick, except I like that crust just a little bit thicker. But not too much, because you don't want it to bake a lot slower than the rest. Okay, now you can see down here, it's already baking. It's already practically cooked. It's starting to get pretty hot. So be careful not to burn your fingers. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my preheated cast iron skillet. I just like to go right to the edges of my skillet. I don't really go up the side, so this won't make as big of a pizza. It'll just be good for adding an extra pizza because I have a large family. So it'll make kind of like a 12 inch, I'd say. I like to drizzle with a little bit of olive oil. And then I kind of spread the oil around with my fingers. You can see this one's like basically already baked. Then I'm gonna sprinkle it with my seasonings. and some salt. I think everything has lots more flavor with salt and oil and herbs. Everything needs that, so that's why I'm adding it. I'm gonna do the same thing on my cast iron pizza, and then I'm going to pop these back into the oven for about 10 minutes or until browned. Then I'm gonna show you how they actually pull up off the pan and make really nice crusts. I passed the baby off to the husband so I could get those out of the oven. And I want to show you how they come up from the pan. As you can see, they pull up from the pan quite easily. And now all that's left to do is top it with some sauce and vegetables or sausage or pepperoni and some cheese. I'm gonna get some fresh mozzarella and shred it onto the top. And this will be all ready to go for an easy meal tonight. I just baked it for 10 minutes and then I will bake it, of course, long enough to melt the cheese. Sometimes I do a little broil to get the top of the cheese a little bit browned, of course. Not long at all because broil cooks things really fast and if I don't set a timer, I end up burning everything. So be sure if you're gonna broil it, to broil it for less than five minutes for sure. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want more information on sourdough starter and other things that I make, I will link it below. There's a from scratch playlist and a fermented foods playlist, as well as a video all about sourdough starter. So be sure to check those out. And if you are new here and you like food from scratch in a handmade home, please be sure to subscribe to my channel for more of that. I upload twice a week. Please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.